blood sausage. Or, as it's known in the north, a black pudding and a liver sausage. I'd been friends for a while, and the black pudding invited the liver sausage for dinner at her home. At the appointed time, the liver sausage cheerfully made her way to the black pudding's house. But, when she passed through the front door into the dimly lit interior, she saw all kinds of strange things. There were many floors with steps up and down, so it was easy to get lost. And on each of the steps, she found some new strangeness. A broom and shovel were fighting with each other, and there was a sorrowful monkey with a big wound on his head. A small man danced in a doorway, elbows out as though tied behind his back. Candles guttered in their sticks, throwing shadows on the red walls of things not there and more such things at each turn. The liver sausage was very frightened and unnerved by this. Even so, she went on, entered the living room and was given a friendly look by the black pudding. The liver sausage tried to ask about the strange things on the stairs, but the black pudding pretended not to hear her, or made it seem as though they were trivial things, or she misdirected her answer. For example, about the shovel and the broom, saying, that was probably my maid gossiping with someone on the stairs, and she changed the subject each time. Then the black pudding said she had to leave the liver sausage alone to go into the kitchen and take care of the meal. She wanted to check to see that everything on the stove was in order and nothing had fallen into the fire. The liver sausage began walking back and forth in the room and kept wondering about the strange things until someone or something appeared. I don't know who it was and said, be warned, liver sausage. You're in a bloody, murderous trap. You should get out of here, quickly, if you value your life. The liver sausage didn't need to think twice about this. She ran out of the door as fast as she could, up and down the stairs, past the dancing man, past the wounded monkey, and the still embattled broom and shovel, around all the strange occurrences, without allowing her gaze to linger. Nor did she stop until she got out of the house and was in the middle of the street. Then she looked around and saw the black pudding standing high up in the attic window with a long, long knife that was glinting as though freshly sharpened. The black pudding pointed it towards her and cried, If I had caught you, I would have had you.